five, four, three, two, one. The Sofa Club is live. Hello, hello. Hi, I'm Joseph Fink. Hello. Hi, I'm one of the producers from the Queer Film and Arts Festival, the uh, London-based DIY festival. And we're delighted to be co-hosting this Sofa Club with Peccadillo this evening. With me here is the singular Lisa Gornick, aka the Thinking Lesbians Crush. And uh, we hope that you've enjoyed this screening of Do I Love You? So we're about to have a Q&A that will last approximately 45 minutes, but could potentially go all night, depending on how wild you kids are. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you would like to take part in the Q&A, which you would, of course, because you're bursting with questions with your inquisitive natures, um, please hit us up on Twitter or any of the usual, usual socials usually using hashtag Peccadillo Sofa Club. And our roving reporters here, Tom and Amelia, are going to scoop up your questions and feed them to us. Um, you'll also be able to get down in the chat on YouTube or Facebook where we're live. So hit us up with your questions. We're waiting to talk to you. Okay. Lisa, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good, good. darling. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Um, so, Do I Love You? It was released in 2002 and it's been awarded the Best Feature Film at the Paris Lesbian and Feminist um, Film Festival. It was recently made, it recently made the BFI list of top 10 lesbian films. In your own words, the essence of this film is why am I a lesbian? And uh, while otherwise, uh, while others have described it as a film for gay men, <laughs> would you like to talk to us about this beloved, this beloved film? Do I, I love? Would, you? <laughs> I'd love to talk about with you about this beloved film. It is a beloved film of mine as well. Um, how did it come into being? How did it come into being? Well, um, it's my first feature film. I made some. Um, short films before and also some kind of video installations and how what was my instinct i mean i i had just recently got a pd100 camera um i was doing um filming for a friend of mine and i and with the, with the payment i got i bought a cam this camera which i realized that a lot of mini dv features were being made on this camera i um got a copy of final cut and i thought well i'm all ready to go and um I was hanging out with a few gay men, and um, one of them said, you know what, there hasn't been a lesbian feature film in Britain for bloody ages, it's time to make one, I'm gonna make it. And it also, then that triggered me, and then I remember a boyfriend, I had a boyfriend, well, yes, um, ages before, and um, before I became a lesbian, well actually I've always been a lesbian, but I just flitted into heterosexuality, and um, he, I remember when I was with him for a very short time, and he was plying me with questions like um, about the lesbian thing, uh, life I'd had before I was with him for that little short time. And I just thought, and he wanted to make a lesbian film. And I was like, enough of these men making lesbian films. I'm going to fucking make a lesbian film. And so that was the trigger. And that was the, that was the urge. And... Yeah, I mean, there were more urges, obviously, than just this bit of anger against these men saying they're going to make the lesbian feature, but that was kind of a big push. Brilliant. So could you talk a little bit about the process of uh, of making, of how you made the film? We've talked about that you had quite, there was none of the script was improvised at all, um, but we'd like to talk about how you worked with the actors and also your role in the film. Well, I, well, okay, so the actual way of making the film, I mean, writing it, um, I was going to have a prop, which was tons of my notes. So I, I just, I had lots of notes. I noted, I, I did like a lot of diary, lots of diaries. I was reading a lot of diaries and where am I at my life in 2000? And when, when did I start doing it? Probably about 2000, 2000. And, um, and I had lots of questions about life. And the questions I had about my life then I turned into dialogues. Um, so a dialogue about, I mean, for example, the writer from the news, news uh, 
a newspaper that writes about lesbians, lesbians there had been an article in The Observer of um, a writer saying, oh, I think I'd like to be a lesbian. Sounds like quite a nice thing to be. Oh, anyway, that really irritated me. So I did a whole dialogue of that, like the straight woman thinking she wanted to be a lesbian. And I did lots of dialogues, lots and lots of dialogues. And I'd say in the audition um, process, and thank you, the actors that came to it 20 years ago, it was kind of like a workshop for those dialogues. Um, so I had lots of dialogues. I spun them around. And I know from being an actor myself, it's it's quite nice to just do workshop kind of auditions. So my auditions were really long. Um, they're about, for each, they were probably run about an hour long. They're not, not, they weren't just like coming and out. So we worked through all the dialogues. Then I kind of settled on some. And then... Um, um, to be honest, to be really honest, I did a short called Do I Love You First. I could go on too long. Maybe I'll get too pedantic. Just shut me down if I go into pedantic mode. I'm like, you don't need all those details. Anyway, I made a little short called Do I Love You that I wasn't in. And I was just outside of it directing. And then that kind of did it. That was a lovely film. And then I feel, I thought I want to be daring, make a feature film of it. You know what? I'm going to do all my dreams at once. I'm going to put myself in the film because I was a, I started out, my, I suppose, my career life. That's what you call it. Um, as an actor, and I had never been in a film, and I just well, I'd been a few student films, but I wanted to be in a feature film. And I thought, go and do it, put yourself in. And to be honest, a lot of films that I really liked were first-person films where people were in their own films. The writer director was often in their their film, so I had that desire. So I put myself in it, and and more. Yes, and more. And um, <laughs> the process, I mean, the process, I could go on for a long time. I'll try and, I was very lucky. I had some really good friends. I'd say everyone in that film, whether they were a friend to start with or they certainly became a friend afterwards, it was made with a lot of friendship. So, um, uh, I mean, I have to say the person pushing the film and holding me in the fort was um, Ofra Shelleff, who was my girlfriend at the time. And she was, the un, un, oh yeah, I called her production assistant. I should call her producer. Basically, she was there at the end of every day, during the day, sometimes holding a boom. Um, often she did hold a boom, sometimes doing the camera. Um, all the car shots were often her holding the camera through the, my dad's um, car. Mm, really? yeah. and, yeah. and there was another woman doing that as well. And then there was Anne Campbell, uh, my friend Campbell, who says hello, by the way. Hi, Campbell. Brilliant. Campbell was incredibly important in just because he took on a lot of the camera as when I'm not in it and um, along with Michael and Haida and just was a great support because mm -hmm. teeny weeny crew. There was one camera, one sound person, and that's it. Yeah. Um, so it was a very small crew, which made it very... Um, Friendly in a way, added it took away the pomp of cinema uh, 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 of um, you know, the film set, which can be sometimes just too, in my opinion, too many people hanging around. I mean, as watching it, it was a really, it was, you know, it's the same London that we live in today, and also it's a really different time. And without kind of getting sentimental about it, but it was 2002. It was first out was there. There were loads of gay bars. There were squat parties. There was all sorts of stuff going on, and I think probably guerrilla filmmaking was a whole lot there are a whole lot of possibilities um there's a little bit uh of what you're alluding to I guess now there was this capacity for you know for freestyling it and doing it with your with your little community there and um you were when we spoke before you talked about your influences you know some of the filmmaking of the time like Go Fish and Jetu Elel were going on you talked about um being influenced by dogma was there anything else that um that especially fed into this film that was cause it was your first feature and it was really I guess a cut you know it's a formative time because you as the films that followed it which we'll talk about in a moment you can see your evolution and your growth as a filmmaker um is there anything there were lots of uh, I think in that um when I excuse me in the eight um in the 90s and the 80s um I really loved going to feel like French films and talking films and lots of talking um, and discussing live and lots of like all this analyzing of life. I, I just adored seeing all that. And it was always a bit of my dream 
to make that kind of film. And there was also uh, lots of American indies that were lots of talking films about life and relationships. And um, I, mean, I could start doing a list of filmmakers that I was watching, but I'd probably forget the ones that I really, you know, I, I, they were, it was just a huge uh, morass of filmmakers. I was like, mm, that's good, that's good. And I, I suppose I was really, inf I just, it was that digital revolution when people were saying like, we don't have to wait for the red light anymore. There's no red light. We have our mini DV cameras. You have your software on your computer and you have a friend and that's it. So not like the Jean-Luc Godard thing, blah, blah, whatever he said about the film and the gun and the lady. It was just like, get your friends, get your mini DV camera and get your Final Cut Pro because that was the main software. And you can go. And you were, um, so you made it. And um, it was, you, you showed it to a... Uh, Showed to a friend of yours, a filmmaking friend. He gave some feedback. Yeah. And well, I was quite shy when I made it. I, the first people I did show it to, maybe won't do this again, actually, sadly, my mother's not alive anyway, so I can't, but showed it to my mother and my father. And they, my dad was saying, I can't hear a word of it. Can't, I just can't hear it. It's just mumble jumble. I can't hear it. He's American. That was, and, and then my, my mom was like, I don't, I don't, what's <laughs> I'm not sure. So that was already getting getting me down. I just thought, shit, they weren't the right people to show it to. They're not like the parents in the film at the time. They weren't. And um, and then I did show it to a filmmaker friend, and I, I was showing it to her, and then she stopped it 15 minutes in, and we're like, Lisa, what, what do you want to do with this film? I mean, do you want to get into the film industry? I don't know. And I was like, why? It's not very good. Anyway, so there was that. And then I sent it to Trisha and I said, Trisha, don't watch it. Uh, Trisha Tuttle at the BFI uh, Flair or Lesbian Gay Film Festival, as it was then. And I said, Trisha, uh, she said, come on, let me see it. Let me see it. I said, oh, it's not very good. And um, she um, she said, I'm making a centerpiece. It's it's great. It's great. Relax. Yeah. That's fantastic. And it went really well from there, didn't it? Yeah, it was great. And my parents were in the fucking, uh, sorry, swearing aloud. I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> I mean, Easy. I just have flipping. You're, yeah, flipping. That's flipping, flipping around. Right. Not flipping, that's right. My parents loved it once it was in the NFT one. Yeah. Yes, quite right, too. I'm enough about that. <laughs> great um, stuff. So, um, and the characters are in it, in it are quite specific as well. Aren't they? Would you could you share some of the um, some of the inspiration for the characters? Your yeah. Some are directly influenced by people I knew. Uh, some are my thoughts about life. So they're my thoughts, or they're my questions. Um, I would say probably the majority of questions that I might have had fears that I might have had um, and I put it in a dialogue and then handing it to a, a, uh, one of the actors, it just kind of melded into them. They became it. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, I'd say most were based on questions that I had and I was making dialogues to work out the questions. Fantastic. And were there any um, real life, are there any real life anecdotes or vignettes that you would like to um share with us that are particular, particularly interesting oh <laughs> I do I mean it's kind of apt I remember I mean it's just a funny one I was thinking about the other day like it was you said you said 9-11 uh, the 9-11 happened during the shooting of oh. the film and I was like oh god this probably sound, makes me sound awful I was like well do we all stop and, and watch television for 24 hours this, you know, the repeat of the news, and I do remember, no, this is a mean story, this is a ridiculous story, um, I remember calling out one of the actors saying, could you get, <laughs> I was texting, I was, no, I was trying to fax the day of fax, I was oh, faxing her strips, and I just couldn't get the fax machine to work, it was like, oh, God, oh. she wasn't getting it, so the fax machine was not working, and it wasn't working, and then her irate boyfriend um, called me up and said, could you, whoever you are, stop faxing these bloody bits of script to me, we are watching the 9-11 right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Schooled. Oh, my God. That sounds sadly on me. But, I mean, um, we still shot the next day. I mean, we still shot the film the next day. Brilliant. 
I mean, I just loved, and this is a theme through uh, lots of your work, actually. It's the, I mean, you mentioned that it's like the writing of sex, really. And it's this, uh, and I guess this is perhaps where this, you know, comment that it's it's for gay men perhaps as well as you know not just for lesbian and not just for lesbians and for women but it's you know you're writing the writing of sex and the exploration of ambivalence about monogamy questions about love questions about sexuality questions about gender and when I watched it again I felt really um moved in lots of ways and I've known you we've known each other for quite a long time and I felt I don't know. I, I felt really touched, actually, that you shared. I felt like it was really revealing, actually. Um, and I thought a lot of what you shared, given that it was made in 2002, is especially kind of rad in lots of ways because, they were com you know, you were sharing things about, you know, what your clitoris means to you, for example. And, you know, this was it, it was a long time ago and it, still, and it also wasn't. But things like, you know, non-binary gender weren't as talked about and there, it was obviously happening but it was um I felt like you were sharing you know it was a very personal film and I, I felt it was quite generous in, in that way and that you were you were working things out on the screen and it felt you know um, very autobiographical whilst also you know and a lot of your attitude of um there was this kind of analytical approach to thinking about thinking things through um, and also the lack of, sh like, performed shame in lots of ways because there's a lot of things that um, Marina does that are, you know, and some of the other characters are well, as well in the course of just living their lives and doing what they need to do. They they kind of um, don't take on a lot of the shame or they, they don't seem to in the film. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I... Shame comes later in my later films. Um, uh, I feel I was very, in, I felt, I felt urged to be daring. Um, and remember, by Campbell, he, he urged me a lot. I have to say, Jenny Olsen, I became friends with them on the, on the film scene. They also urged me, just say it. Do you know what? Just say it. And I think I was at a stage where I just thought, I'm going to say... <laughs> The, not the word, but the thing that I want to say. And um, I just, I, I suppose at that time, I, I, who knows what I was going through, but I was so daring, but I just felt I'm going to say it. And I think... Which bit, is that? Uh, Which bit is that that you were going to say? Well, I was going to say the whole film has bits the of that. The whole film, it. yeah. She was going like, wow, look at you, Lisa. Yeah, look yeah. You, coming around on your bike saying all those things and <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, I was I was looking at mine and saying... <laughs> But I really love, I really do like, yeah, so anyway, I feel I was dead. I feel I was very, and I was also um, uh, helped along to do that by the people that were around me at the time. I wasn't really silenced. I wasn't, um, no one was saying, oh, you can't say that. And if I did have those voices, they came probably in the edit when I thought, oh, what am I making? Oh, my God. But I just, I tried to keep them at bay. I feel a lot of my... The film might also come because I really, because of when I did acting and when I do drawing as well, I just tend to just let it out, just let it out. And then it's a first draft and you can always clean it up in the edit. So um, you can always hide stuff if you don't want to. So, but always um, when I was doing a lot of acting, I used to love just spontaneous acting. So I love spontaneity. So um, the writing was quite spontaneous outbursts and um I didn't hold back. And I think that's also very good for all writing, never to you know. And I I must have read somewhere, just start writing and don't stop. You know, that kind of thing. Fabulous. The, yeah. Fabulous. So we have some questions coming in. Oh. Should, we, should we take it to the... Uh, take it to the floor. Yeah. Okay. Our first question is from Mel, who... Hi, Mel. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Hi, Mel. Hi, <laughs> Mel. <laughs> Hi Mel. Uh, Mel asks, "What films were you watching that inspired you for this film?" Yeah, because I wasn't saying. That. Um, let me think. Two thousand. I was going to say that, and I was seeing. Well, I did see. I did see Je Tout Il Elle by Chantal Ackerman, and her. 
just her daring of being in a lorry masturbating a man and, and you know, mm-hmm. with her girlfriend. I just thought that was brilliant. Um, I have to say I was seeing some American men, male filmmakers, some of which remain nameless, um, and just a lot of them very daring. Um, so you want to know actually names. I mean, what if I say film that's made in 2005? I don't think so, honey. You saw <laughs> You're influenced by that film. Um, I do feel that I've been told recently, I'm not a great cinephile, which I'm really embarrassed about. I have to re- uh, improve that. I will certainly have to start taking notes of films that I watch. Um, you know what? I saw a lot of Sadie Benning films, yeah. um, which I really liked. Just It's just when people are really like, wow, you're doing that? That's fantastic. I love that. Um, I'm, 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 my mind is drifting. Well, maybe a bit of like what's his name? Um, oh no! <laughs> oh him! Yeah, I love him. Uh, oh, you know him, the French man that does yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I love him. Brilliant. <laughs> so he'll come back to me in a minute. <laughs> well, we can we can always rejoin that question. I mean, that's the way with those things; they resurface definitely. Yeah, and I do Instagram. Maybe I'll put a little thing on Instagram. I'll remember them. Sorry, that was a good question, Mel, because you stumped me out there, and I should have. Yeah, we can circle that. back. That's cool. So we have another question. We have a question from Siobhan. Hi, Siobhan. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so entertaining. Um, I feel a bit like Nicole Kidman in To Die For. Um, anyway, to um, in the 19 years since you released the film, 19 years, 19 years, since you released the film, do you feel that technology and so on has made it more or less easy to make an independent film and to have it seen? So that is a really interesting question because you've kind of touched on that a bit already, but it is. Interesting, yeah. good, really good question. Um, Cause of course, when it came out, there was no, in, there was minimal internet, wasn't there? Was there? I can't remember, no, but that's not how you distribute a film. Um, I think there's been good and bad, of course. I'm gonna, that be, I'm not sitting on the fence, but I can think the good things was that I, what I sense was the mini DV really broke away from the industry controlling you through machinery. Mm -hmm. You had this really simple camera and you had this really simple software that people were sharing. Um, So you could really, it felt like you'd really make a film for no money. And I feel, um, I mean, distribution's a whole different subject. Is it better now or not? I mean, then uh, with Do I Love You, I was very lucky. It It got taken up by the festivals and uh, the distributors, and I think I was just on the cusp of, of when you could probably get paid a bit for distributing a film, and mm-hmm. then that all seemed to flip away, and you didn't really get paid very much for being a filmmaker. I didn't get paid for very much for this because I wasn't, I probably wasn't savvy enough, and blah blah with the cigar in my mouth. But I, um, <laughs> really, I, yeah, I didn't, I no cigar in your mouth, it's remiss. I know. I've got, to, I've got to add that into the equation now. Um, and so now it's the, you know, it's the um, it's HD, it's HD cameras, which your phones as well. I think as well what now, I mean, then, I mean, I, I know I'm scooting around because there's, there's obviously the experimental film world where you could be more daring in what you showed. And I was veering towards more the feature film of uh, trying to, urging myself, wanting to get into cinema. This film did show in cinemas, uh, you know, um, Prince in London had a, a season at the Prince Charles. So, uh, yes. get back to the subject. What I'm saying is, I think there were good things then. There are good things now. <laughs> <laughs> and there are differences now that make it seem worse. Because mm. also, so interesting with HD, you suddenly thought with HD and the phones, oh good, we've got another thing that's uh, new. And then they brought out new bloody, oh no, sorry. This is how I, I'm, I'm just thinking it through. With mini-DV, they stopped mini-DV and they did HD. And they're like, oh, fuck, HD is so expensive. Mm. I felt the industry was upset when we had the mini-DV and, and the liberation that we all felt with mini-DV yeah. and worrying about lighting. And, traction. and, yeah. and films that don't worry about the light, don't worry about what it looks like. Um, and I suppose I am talking about the films that are trying to veer into a kind of industry world. Um there is obviously the underground cinema and the experimental cinema that goes like, well, we're not, we're doing our own version. 
or stuff like Fringe Film Festival, you know, you, you find different routes, alternative routes. Um, and now, of course, the internet is a huge route. I mean, look at this, me sitting and talking to you. I've tried to light it with the age of a friend and, you know. Um, it's beautiful. <laughs> I feel like in the 19... Well, maybe that's good, but, you know, I'm not or a search like me. I'm in a... Very, very atmospheric. Yeah. Brilliant. I don't think so. That's a really good question. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking before about the surveillance, you know, I mean, I don't know how it was getting permission did you, for all of the, did you, you know, did you get permission for all the places that you shot? No. Not at all. Can you yeah. imagine? Yeah. There's a British library now. Uh, no. I right. <laughs> yeah. No, we walked into the, when I'm not in the, well, I'm not in the, well, I'm not in the um, film, I'm doing the camera. So anyway, me, I think, did I have a sound person? I can't imagine I had a boom coming in. That might just be pushing it. But I think I actually did. I was always very determined to get a good set, um, good separate microphone, not use the camera microphone. I read that bit. I, I knew that bit to put in my mind. So me and a, and a sound operator, we walk into the British Library and start shooting these scenes in the British Library. And the security person just walked right past us and went, like, oh, sorry, don't let me interrupt. I'll just walk around. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> and um, and on, on the bus, the bus, we just got on the bus, they sat there, we had to do the scenes at various times, do it again, do it again. Sorry, bus conductor, do you mind? Well, you've got one more go. Oh, I don't know what to do with this girl. Mm -hmm. And um, no one was stopping and um, just shoving around. I was just looking, using the Guardian. I mean, I didn't, I'm not sure they're not going to come and sue me now, but I'm thinking of all the rules that you would classically have broken of clearing, clearances. I didn't bother. And that would not be allowed. I mean, I'm sure that would be very hard to do now. And certainly all the locations <laughs> Post 2000, uh, post 9/11, that all stopped. Security did say, "Oi, get out of your camera! You're not coming yeah. in here, shooting yeah. around." Yeah. Which actually leads us into your subsequent films, um, shooting after. Obviously, as you mentioned, you're actually shooting during 9/11, and um, and so you made TikTok Lullaby a couple of years after that, and then that was followed by the Book of Gabriel. Yeah. Which you've described as being the big sister to big sister film to Do I Love You, and um, so the beautiful thing. So it's a companion piece, and but and the beautiful thing about this is that it has there's a kind of a quartet. Um, there's the feature film, which is um, Book of Gabriel. There's a beautiful book that you made. Um, there's a web series, web series, web series, even, <laughs> and uh, which you which you've made. And um, which we might even have a little clip from to watch right now. What are we going to look at? The web series first? Can I kind of just talk about it first before we look at it? Are we talking about the web series or the, or the trailer? What do you think we're going for first? I think we're going to go for the web series, aren't we? Pause a minute. Pause a minute. Can I just talk us through it? Yes, you can. Um, so, um, the book of Gabrielle, so yes, I mean, we're now l l jumping all the way to the 2016 when the book of Gabrielle came out. So that's a long gap. I have to say I made 2007 TikTok Lullaby, um, which is a lovely film itself about the ambivalence of parenthood. And in the book of Gabrielle, I wanted to revisit, I think that's why I sometimes think it's a companion piece to Do I Love You? Because it's, it's again a character played by me called Gabrielle now and um, investigating the uh, how how we talk about sex by a, a male writer and me trying to do drawing book my character trying to draw a drawing book of, of sex and my kind of angst <coughs> with male writers that talk again talk about in fact it goes back to what I just said at the beginning men my, my anti-patriarchy is welling out of my mouth when men feel they can talk about women and they and you know they don't talk about themselves they don't talk about who they are but they just focus on the woman I was very I get quite turned I, I found myself I can sometimes get turned on by people like Robert Crumb and Philip Roth but then get enraged that I'm getting turned on by these uh men writing really intense sex stuff I'm like oh again am I him or am I me who am I in that in that um in that uh, scenario. And again, I wrote lots of dialogues, again, around um, the depiction of sex, um, having a relationship. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, so relationships. And um, again, the actors just got the scripts um, 
And I feel what they probably say is this doesn't happen often that you just get scripts and you don't know what you're talking about, but the dialogues, they enjoy the dialogues. And maybe it was a release from the way that films are normally made, that you get the whole script and the actor normally marks out and plots out their plot line and they're quite contained with how they think it's going to go. So we're going to watch the web series now. If we're going to watch the web <laughs> now, the website. So I made it in 2016. Uh, the book of Gabriella feature, which we might maybe end this whole thing of a clip of the trailer. I always wanted to think. Of, I think I was thinking, what is a film? What is a feature film? Where do films? I mean, this is quite relevant now. I suppose where do films get seen? Um, how do we become? Um, so where do we films get seen? But I know that I very much like live performance. I like live performance. And I really hope I can be like. Anyway, I. Cr- I'm obviously craving liveness, and um, we all are. And I wanted to see the difference between having a subject matter as the feature film and having a live drawing show. So I got very much into drawing in the interim. And then having a book, wanting to make a book, and then this web series. When I got to shoot in the web series, which I shot it last year in 2019, I was going through a really, really sad time. I was very um, depressed, and I was actually isolating through depression. However, I got... I was fortunate enough to work with two really uh, wonderful people, um, Kate uh, Wilson and Jasmine, Roger and Kent. And they, I think when we got to shoot it, um, I think they were like, oh, are you okay? I mean, (laughs) but they they were so cool. They're like, let's just do it. What came out was, it was meant to be this kind of illustrious, seductive, um, how to do it sex um, series kind of a bit wry, I mean, not taking myself seriously, I wasn't going to be a karma, but a kind of offbeat karma sutra. And instead what came out was, I've been over drinking my depression away, which is not a thing to do, um, I've now learnt. And so I was really probably gin adult and um, totally depressed about the undercurrents that I've been thinking about in Book of Gabrielle. So it's actually a kind of, what would it be? I don't know. But a really sad companion piece. But I actually really like it. So when I saw it, I like, oh, you look sad, darling. I feel compassion for myself in this. But I actually think it's very, very honest. And indeed, the web series is also probably a great. Well, they're all sisters and of, of, the, of do I love you? But I think, I think I just want to say that that I'm very intrigued by how to do it now. It hasn't come out yet. It's um. It's about 17 episodes, short little episodes. And again, I thought you could look at little episodes, like you look at little cartoons on your phone or on the fil- or on the computer, or installed as in little installations. It touches my heart. I mean, I hope it touches your heart. It touches my heart anyway. And so we'll see a little bit now. Sorry. Cue the thing. Cue that thing. That was a long introduction. And this is just one episode. So there's 17 episodes and it's all tracking my life how I saw it when I was quite sad. time to learn how to have sex on my own, surprisingly, and um, I'd been out with this quite control freak girlfriend, kind of girlfriend, straight woman and girlfriend, and um, um, and, uh, she was desperate for me to have an orgasm, I just never could with her, anyway. I finally moved back to London and um, I was living with a Scottish girl, another Scottish girl, obviously like Scottish people, of course. And um, she was small, had a little fringe, but she looked a bit like my first love, but she was straight. And uh, she was very intrigued by my lesbianism, always asked me about it. In the fridge, she had some cherry tomatoes that she bought. And she said, but she liked some cherry tomatoes in a quite coquettish way. And I said, yeah, thank you. I'd love some. So 
I took them, I washed them, and I went up to my room. I wanted to be on my own. I was thinking about the colour purple. And in it, there was mention of she found her cherry. And I wondered, maybe that's what I have to find. So I lay on the bed with the cherry tomatoes. And I began to eat them one by one. And then with my other hand, I began to explore where maybe my cherry was. And I found it. I found my cherry with the cherry tomato in my mouth. So I rang up my kind of controlling girlfriend and I told her I found my cherry. And she knew exactly what I meant. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was just going to say how to do it is going to be somewhere soon. So watch this space. I mean, I hope so. And I'd love it to be, yeah, but it's going to find a home soon. Exactly. And it's, 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 42, it's 42 minutes, little mini web series of these drawing talks. So it's just me uh, talking to camera gets quite hard and heavy at times when I open up about some heavy issues. That's okay. Beautiful. Okay, so watch this space. Yeah. Okay, so we have wonderful questions coming forth from the audience. Um, actually, just to go back to um, was a question from Mashup X, and I don't know if this is about just uh, do do I love you? Um, the question was how did you how did you choose the actors? They they appeared to be extremely authentic. Oh, in do I love you? Yeah, I love auditioning. I mean, how I chose them was um, I do a love audition because I, as I said before, I, I find auditioning. I'm sneak. Am I sneakily? I'm doing kind of workshop with the actors that come to the auditions and. Um, Hmm, how did I choose them? I mean, often it was availability because let's be honest, the economy of this film was that people were doing it for love and not money. So those that, so that was sometimes a through. However, let me just point out, if people were working, I, I mean, I would work it around them. So that's probably wasn't, that wasn't going to be a stopper. Um, no, so we always worked the, the, the um, the thing around the actor's availability. Look at me trying to be so like such a decent employer. Um, <laughs> I think I cannot. I think there was something that just spoke to my heart about certain people, mm. and I just be like, you're just you're just you're just wonderful. You're gorgeous. You're getting the love. Just you just you've got a love for it. If they had a love for it, I just love them back. Um, and. I didn't ask many questions about themselves. I didn't do a tick list like, oh, are you a lesbian, actually? I didn't, mind, you know, maybe a lot of them were, oh, you're actually straight. You're a fantastic lesbian. Wow. Um, and um, so it was a lot of love. I just loved the audition processes, but I don't think you could do that. They're not, they weren't industry type process uh, rehearsals. They were really like long, long run up, um, improvise with her. You're a woman, blah, blah, blah. You're doing this. Oh, God, that's great. Just my kind of, I, Maybe I was getting off on it. I mean, just <laughs> getting all these scenarios. <laughs> well, I hope works. they had a great time too. I don't think there was any, you know, I think it was all above board what I did, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of kind of flirty fun. Very good. Well, it worked. Brilliant. And yeah. Shannon Shannon has asked, um, did, did having Raquel play your character's girlfriend in two of your films affect the experience in how your films work together? Um, Shannon says that they would love more with her, more films with her. <laughs> okay, is Raquel, in part, is Raquel watching this right now? Okay, I, well, I'll, I'll let Raquel know. I mean, I, um, Raquel and I knew each other from being, um, being actors together. And so we knew, we were friends before. And... I think in Do I Love You, I wasn't actually going to have a lover. 
I was going to be a, a single woman. That might have made it a much different film, not all this cheating going on, obviously. Um, I was going to be a single woman wandering around thinking, shall I be, what am I as a lesbian with a man or as a lesbian with a woman? I'd actually shot quite a lot of it already of me hanging out with all these men. And then I met Raquel for coffee and she was in teachers at the time. And I was a bit like actor, you know, actors, they get a bit like, mm, what are you in? I'm in teachers. That was a, like a series. She was making money as an actor. And I'm like, well, I'm just doing a low budget feature. You're making a low budget feature. That's what I want to do. So that's how both of our, minor jealousies of each other's careers at that moment melded and I said well just come in board and you can use your teacher Radio yeah. Times kudos and um, help us get some more more people yeah. she's got an increasing fan club um, so I know her and we've always um, she was great to flirt with as the girlfriend I mean she just she was just a good old flirt very and good I, I think we both flirts. We met, we met each other's matches there, and she's a great actress. Too. I mean, let's talk about the let's talk about the profession of acting. She's really good. Excellent, excellent. Um, we have a comment from uh, Krista. She says, "Krista, Krista Holker. Hello, Krista. Hello, Krista Holker." Yeah. Um, we have a not a question, but um. Krista says, I just want to say I love this film. It was so important in my search for London lesbian life, triple L alliteration, in 2006, uh, just before I moved to London from Chicago. Then when I met Lisa soon after, I knew I had made it in capital letters. So there you go, Lisa Gornick, icon. Well, that's made my, my that's <laughs> been more than my day. That's, I'm going to run with that one. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I've been having a strange old day, and that's just whooped it out. Thank you. Well, I just love so much love coming at you. Um, so we have a couple more questions. Actually, just to arc back to uh, well, actually to kind of a, I guess loop in to the draw to your drawing practice actually, okay. which um is so beautiful and um I've been to one of your live shows downstairs at the book club, and for anyone who ever has the, the opportunity to come and see Lisa drawing live in any on any platform, be it in real life or uh, digitally, I really recommend it. It's, it's really superb. And um, Martha uh, from Fringe is actually asking, do you know when you're doing another live uh, drawing show? Do you have any ideas or anything planned? Well, um, live in terms of um, physical live, I don't. We don't know about yeah. I, I will do that as soon as as soon as we're allowed. Even social yeah. distance. I don't mind doing a social distance one. I will still flirt and draw with everyone, even if we we'll <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> Flirting is life, right? Hi, you over there, and you're over there, and you're up there. There's just three in the audience. Fantastic! It's a national theatre. I finally made it. <laughs> that will be soon. I love it. Um, however, I do really. I've been doing it a bit online, and then I stored a bit. I love it. I do love doing it. There is something so joyous about the spontaneity, back to that spontaneity word, which drawing just gives me. Um, so I can only urge you, if you want to, if anyone's interested, just to become my friend on Instagram, and I will, I will be much more vigilant about doing them. <laughs> um, and, and also I will let you know. But I think I might – I did do a few Insta – what's it? Insta Live? The what? Insta -live. Yes. Is that the word? It is. It is now. <laughs> and I think I'll do them more. And also, I think, thank you, thank you, Martha. I feel that's a bit of a push, actually, that question. I was like, get on with it. I did begin doing one, actually. I did a little rough one last a week, I don't know, 10 days ago, called Rosa Luxemburg Goes to Rehab. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> because where I went. I I did, I have to say, after bloody blah, blah, how to do it, um, a dear friend of mine said, you're in a not good place. And anyway, anyway, that's, that's very honest. I'm coming out. Hello, my name is Lisa and I'm a, and um, I just said, I did after that, I thought about the whole capitalism of the drink industry. It enraged me. It enraged me that I've been so duped to drink and so duped by shops. And the whole way it sells to women and men, the whole way it sells itself, the disgusting quality of it. And when I was sitting in, in rehab, I'm, just, I'm coming out, I say everything else. Why am I, 
See the shame. I was talking about the shame coming later in life. This mm -hmm. is the shame that came later in life. And it came a bit. And I think, no, I was very, very lucky to have a friend that, 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 that plucked me away from rubbish, you know, rubbish alcohol, ethanol down my mouth and said, out. And thank God he did. And so I began to do this thing about Rosa Luxemburg. I did history at university, so I've always got a kind of inkling to do something about the early communist women. That's what I studied at history. And I want to revive my knowledge of that. And um, so it's going to be about, it might be about that. The Rosa Luxemburg goes to rehab. So she will be me. A bit confusing because I tried it and I couldn't get my, I didn't know whether Rosa Luxemburg was me or I was her. And that will be that. But I have, I have various ideas. I really want to do them. I love doing them. And I want to make new feature films as well. Beautiful. So actually there are two two questions that kind of touch on this. One is from Amy Bell, um, who was asking, saying that they're interested in how your drawing and film practices might intersect and inform each other. And then also Kate has asked, since drawing and filmmaking are part of your practice, um, have you considered working with animation? Yeah. So drawing and film, I feel... Um, I don't really draw storyboards. I once worked on the Channel 4 film, drew immaculate storyboards, and the cameraman threw them away and said, we don't use them. Like, okay. okay. I mean, he's a lovely cameraman, but it was tough. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually don't like, I don't like the, um, sorry about that sound effect. Um, muscle talk. And, um, <laughs> someone's getting married in the corner of the room. Uh, <laughs> such a busy room here. Um, what am I saying? Um, got distracted. Uh, drawing and film. I, I get my ideas from drawing. So it will be my drawing of scripts often. I use the drawing to get into it. I sometimes will get a bit of a placement, but I really, I tend to draw the dialogues out. So I draw kind of slightly cartoons for the dialogues. And I feel the act of drawing is, again, quite spontaneous, quite quick. And I love that feeling on the film that you... Book of Gabrielle was quite structured in a way, more structured than I normally do, and it has its quality for that. But normally I feel that I like to be quite, oh, you don't quite know what's going on. And I feel Do I Love You has that really well. It's a very, like, drawing quality, like little small sketches, sketches and drawings. And with animation, I would love to, I would love to do, I, I, I would love to do animation myself. I'd love to learn a software, there probably is one, where I can just do real nice line drawings and really talk deeply and daringly. God, I sound like Brene Brown. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you must. But I think it's true. And I feel if I was doing, again, you do those drawings, you like a bit, bit naughty. <laughs> However, I went to an animation workshop and I'd have to give the drawing away and I'd be the writer and I actually want to do, the, I, again, this desire to do everything, maybe there's a problem there, but I don't think there is. Um, I want to draw and write. So I'm gonna look for software. That's on my list of things to do. Look for a software that does that. Fantastic. Um, we've got some um, we've got some more comments coming in, comments and questions coming in. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Um, Martha has responded to your question by voting for live drawing in the park. Oh, hang on, Martha, though. Wait a minute. But what about, I mean, I suppose I could, I just I just hold it up like that. Because I think yeah. the thing about the drawing shows, it's projected. I mean, I'd have to get an electric, what about the electricity? An one? electric projector, I mean, imagine. Oh, that. <laughs> I mean, I have the generator. Was, we have like a cycle-powered projector, drawing, cruising, flirting event. I mean, it's got to happen, doesn't it? But I'm, I'm going to take that just. It's good. I could do it like a mini one, like, like a... Well, a bit like another man I don't want to mention, bloody Rolf Harris. I mean, that's a really fucking bad one. Hilarious. We have a Dr. B. Dr. B is in the house as well, <laughs> saying uh, your films are always so candid and intimate. Don't ever lose that. Where are your next feature film thoughts leading? And by the way, the web series looks fab. Aww. Well. I, again, I'm thinking, finally, Dr. B and everyone else, step Dr. away. 
step away from in front of the camera. Try try one film where you are just back, stepping back and um, you're going to be behind the camera directing and looking and, and, and concocting the whole piece and helping everyone. Because I think everyone has to, when I'm in the camera, everyone's kind of having to hold me a bit as well. I mean, I hope I'm not a prima donna. Maybe I am. I mean, that's, I, anyway, someone can comment now. She is. No, but I mean, <laughs> I thought step away. So I have begun to write not one, but three feature films. But get on with it. I've got to get on with it. I've also been um, delving into the experience of documentary. So that's interesting. Sadly, I'm in it. But I might have to cut myself out because I don't like myself in it. And um, so I'm writing. And I'm writing with the aim of not being in them. I think, oh, you cut to cut to two years time. I thought you said on camera you weren't going to be in this film. You're actually. <laughs> I mean, let's hope that I'm not in it. Just be interesting. <laughs> Brilliant. But I do want to act in other people's films. I've got now now touting for work. Ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what I want. To, I mean, I don't know why I said that. Brilliant. Um, we just have uh, some. Some comments really. So Paul Stubble Harris says, always loved your spontaneity. Um, what are you working on now? Which I think maybe there's more. I mean, apart from three feature films and a documentary and a drawing shows and uh, <laughs> various other hijinks. I'm not great. You know what? I'm never great at. And maybe it's something that I read, read early ago, a bit a long time ago. <laughs> that you that I'm not very good at saying I'm doing a story about blah 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 because it takes away the delight in making something if you talk too much about the actual subject matter. That's just for me. Um, I could sound so drama schooly if I say why, who I read the quote, but I won't. It was a Polish man. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> um, and Mashup just got back to us saying, thank you for answering. That was the, the question about the actors. Do I Love You is one of those films that I completely forget is a film because they, they just love the style that is, uh, that is so honest. Um, so that's really great. Um, so I, we're, um, we've, um, we've nearly been chatting for an hour. I know, I didn't feel like that at all. I know, I know. We're often, Josephine. Yeah, it's been lovely. So thank you, Lisa. It's been a delight speaking to you. Is there anything else that we would um that that you feel you would like to say before we wrap it up? I would just yeah, I maybe just yeah, about these drawing things, come and find me on Instagram. Is that what people say? Sorry. I mean I'm just <laughs> these drawing shows. Um um I mean, feel free to ask me questions more. I hope I answered them enough. Um, I'm really, I'm in a much better, I, I feel in a very creative place right now, which is very good. I mean, I know this is a really, really hard time. The world and everywhere is like in disaster zone. So um, I don't know, thinking about that, it's intense what's going on outside this little bubble of this little moment of, Liberty. I hope there's a revolution. I hope we change. Yeah. The it's, yeah. com it's coming. I yeah. hope there's a revolution coming because we're not going back to what it is. Things have to change. Uh, yeah, and they are. They change. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make them change. And all, yeah, we have, yeah, with our films and our drawings and our being together and, and working to being together. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. Sending you so much love. We really, yeah, you've made so many things. I think you I don't know, possible for so many people actually, and you changed the, like changed all of our lives in in so many different ways with your work, and just actually by being fabulous. So oh. <laughs> thank you very much. It's really been it's been lovely chatting to you, and um, I'd also like to give a massive shout out to Amelia and Tom from Peccadillo who made this whole event possible. Really super cool, and um, it's run smoothly because of them really. <laughs> so it's great. And um, I'd just like to share with you, um, so this has been um, a collaboration with Fringe, and um, I'd like to share with you that we're preparing a whole summer of queer online magic. We may have a pandemic, but it's not going to hold us back. So keep an eye out for us on the socials. And actually, um, I'm really excited to say that tomorrow evening, actually, you can join us for a social history of sniffing, doing poppers, doing Zoom on poppers, which is a video call with Adam Smith,
So this is an online event about the history of poppers um, from angina patients in 1867 to popper beta porn supercuts today. Um, Adam Smith, who is uh, one of the fabulous um, people from Fringe, he looks after our literary stuff as well as doing lots of other cool stuff, um, with our special guest, Dr. Sharon Husbands, uh, taking us on a head rush tour of the history of poppers via Zoom. And this event was at Fringe last year. It was one of the most popular events. Um, it was interactive and it will be this time as well. So check us out. Um, ticket holders also get exclusive access to a short film featuring poppers by our beloved Grant um, and starring Louis Amalia. So check us out on the socials and um, see you online. Lots of love. Peace out. <laughs>